A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Thessalonians. Now we command you, beloved, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to keep away from believers who are living in idleness and not according to the tradition that they received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to imitate us. We were not idle when we were with you, and we did not eat anyone's bread without paying for it. But with toil and labor we worked night and day so that we might not burden any of you. This was not because we do not have that right, but in order to give you an example to imitate. For even when we were with you, we gave you this command. Anyone unwilling to work should not eat, for we hear that some of you are living in idleness, mere busybodies, not doing any work. Now such persons we command and exhort in the Lord Jesus Christ to do their work quietly and to earn their own living. Brothers and sisters, do not be weary in doing what is right. The word of the Lord. Hymn 707.
Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. When will this be, and when will all of these things take place? So some of the disciples ask Jesus when he says not one stone of the temple will be left in place. They, this came about because they were asking Jesus or pointing out to Jesus about the beauty of the temple and the stonework and the windows and you know, everything that goes into a beautiful temple like this place. And Jesus said... Pay attention. Not one stone will be left in place. And they get worried. When will this happen? When will this take place? When will we see this happen? It seems that we as humans have an insatiable desire to know when things will happen. We have this strong desire to know when the end of the world is coming or when Jesus is coming. And this has been going on for a long time. Everybody from the Millerites of 1843 and 44, and with the writing of the late great planet Earth and the Left Behind series of the 1990s and 2000s, people want to know when the end of the world is coming, when Jesus is coming. But Jesus says, that's not where it's at. Don't you got problems with it. Don't follow them. Pay attention. And nation will rise against nation. There will be wars and rumors of wars and insurrections. And people will come and will say, I am he, or the end is near. But don't follow them. We have this desire to know when the end is coming, and people know that, and people will pray on that. As I mentioned, the Millerites, who in 1843, Reverend John Miller said that the world would end in October of 1843, and his followers went out to the hill and hung out waiting for Jesus to come, and it didn't happen. And then so he did some research and he figured out that he miscalculated and really it's going to be October of 1844. So again, they went out and sold everything they had, hung out on the hill and waited for Jesus to come and it didn't happen. And if you read the account of the day, there was great wailing and weeping and gnashing of teeth and they didn't know what to do now. And this has been going on down through history. People preying on people's fears of being left behind or not wanting to be forgotten or wanting to be special. And it happens in politics and it happens in religion. As I mentioned, the Left Behind books of the 1990s and 2000s People follow that and they look at this as as a road map or the late great planet Earth, which I read in the early 80s. Some of you may have read it too that, you know, calculated that from the beginning of Israel, the new Israel state in 1948, one generation was 40 years. So the end was going to be happening in 1988. And it didn't happen. And then Hal made an update to his book and revised it and reprinted it. And then did another update. And then another update. And I think, and I think he's maybe on his fifth or sixth update. Those people, the Millerites, the Hal Lindsay's, John Hagee's, all of those people that are predicting the end of the world and Jesus coming back, I've got news for you. They have a 0% success rate. 
they have a 100% failure rate. And they will continue to have a 100% failure rate because nobody knows, not even Jesus himself. He said, I even I don't know when this will happen. But be prepared. When Jesus is talking about this, he's not giving us a roadmap. He's not saying, you know, this war will lead to this, which will lead to that, which will lead to that, which will lead to my appearing. He's not giving us a roadmap as to what will happen, but he is stating how things are. Wars and rumors of wars and insurrections and all of these things have been happening since the beginning of human history. Cain rose up against Abel and he killed him. Nation is risen against nation for time immemorial. We still have wars, we still have insurrections. Jesus is telling us to pay attention. Pay attention. Paul said this famously, we are in the world and not of the world, which means that we have to deal with everything out there. Jesus is not telling us to just sit back and watch it happen and not get involved in this stuff. But as Christians, we do need to be there and, and help and stand up against certain things. Florida has been hammered with yet another hurricane. Puerto Rico is still digging out from that first one along with those in Florida who were, who were bombarded by the first hurricane. But those natural disasters are just that. They're natural disasters. They aren't because somebody did something bad. I remember there was a time, and I don't know if it's still going on because I don't pay attention to these people anymore, but there was a time when hurricanes would come through and the preachers of the day on TV would say, well, it's because you elected this person, or it's because you allowed gay marriage in your state, or it's because of this, and it's not. It has nothing to do with it. Because if it was true, the hurricane that just swept through last week, you could argue it was because DeSantis was reelected. No matter my personal opinion on that, it is not because DeSantis was reelected. It's a natural disaster, and we are called not to sit back and not do anything about it, but to help out where we can. We can help out through financial means with ERD and other recovery efforts. We can help people as we can. That is part of it. We can't step back and just say, Jesus is coming, I'm not doing anything, and I'm waiting to be taken away. I'm waiting to be lifted up into the clouds. Last week we had two baptisms over here, and it was, a, it, was, it was a great day if you were with us, and I think everybody was. We, um, and it was such a great day, I even had a member of the choir who shall remain nameless, but I had a member of the choir say, we should do incense more often. That was great. <laughs> Don't know. But we, we had two baptisms. We baptized Daphne and we baptized J.D., and you who were here renewed your baptismal vows and made some promises. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and in the breaking of bread? Will you continue in the prayers? Will you work for justice and freedom and peace? Will you proclaim the good news of God in Christ? Will you respect the dignity of every human being? This is part of our work of discipleship. There are things that we need to stand up against. Christian nationalism and the rise of fascism and things that would, would put groups of people away or hide or try to overrun, threaten 
the democracy that we enjoy and love, we need to stand up against that, speak out against it. It happened before, it'll happen again. Mussolini, Hitler, and you know, Stalin, all of those things. But this is not the end of time. Jesus says, don't chase after those who say, I am he, or the end is near. Don't chase after those. But instead, instead of chasing after this, instead of being afraid of what is coming and allowing people to prey on us. And I, am, I said this at the early service, and, I, and it's still it, it's true. I don't know if I am more upset with the people who prey on those who have those fantasies and buy into the con game and continually send their money to them or if I'm upset with the people that continually support the con. Don't chase after them. Instead, where is our hope and where is our discipleship? Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and the prayers and the fellowship and the breaking of bread? Will you respect the dignity of every human being? Will you proclaim the good news of God in Christ? Because discipleship is that we follow the one who said, love God, love your neighbor, and carry your cross. We aren't looking for a quick fix. We aren't looking to get out of here. We are looking for discipleship and following God and following Christ because that is hard work. It's easy just to say, beam me up, Scotty, I want out of here. Don't chase after those who say, I am he, or the end is near. Instead, continue to follow the one who said, love God, love your neighbor, carry your cross. That's discipleship, and it's hard work, but it's what we are called to do. Amen. And now let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed on page 358. We believe in one, one God, God, the Father, Father the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light. True God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified, he has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen.
The prayers of the people are Form 6, as printed in your bulletin, are on page 392 in the Book of Common Prayer. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all, all who work, work for justice, justice freedom, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For, for the, the victims, victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and, and oppression. For the people of Puerto Rico and Florida, and all those who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Eugene, our diocesan bishop, Todd, our rector, Sue, our deacon, and for all bishops and other ministers. For all, all who serve, serve God, God in, his in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, including online prayer requests, thanksgiving, and remembrances. We pray for all of those suffering from cancer, especially Audrey. We give thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week, Iris Heichel, Tina Engel, and Maya Wells. Let us say together the birthday prayer. O oh God, uh, our times are in your hand. hand. Look, Look with, with favor, favor, we pray, we pray on, on your servants as, as they begin, begin another, another year. year. Grant, Grant that, that they, they may grow in wisdom, wisdom and grace and, and strengthen in their, their trust, trust in your goodness. goodness. All, all the, the days, days of their, their lives, lives through, through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Amen. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died that they may have a special place in your eternal kingdom. Praying especially for the repose of the soul of Jansen Frey and Krista. Lord, let your kind, loving kindness be upon them who put, put their, their trust, trust in you. you. Almighty God, giver of every good gift, look graciously on your church and so guide the minds of those who shall choose a bishop for this diocese that we may receive a faithful pastor who will care for your people and equip us for our ministries through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Turning to page 360 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us confess our sins against God and neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. We stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace, Bill. Peace. Peace to everybody up there.
Please be seated. Am I, am I missing something? Am I forgetting something? No, okay, I thought I'd, anyway, it's all, it's all, it's all okay. Uh, we had convention this past week, I'm just kind of a little, little out of it, um, but we're, you know, we're back. And then, and then I'm out of, or a reminder, I'm out of town Wednesday, or Tuesday and, and Wednesday, so. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to the Lord.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer A on page 361. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. And we pray that those who are unable to physically receive this most blessed sacrament at this time may be filled with Christ's presence, so united with us and Christ in his body and blood that we may all offer his blessing to a world in need. I invite all baptized Christians to come forward and receive communion.
continuing with the post-communion prayer in your bulletin, let us stand and pray. Almighty and ever-living God, God, we thank thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most most precious body and and blood of your your Son, Son, our Savior, Savior, Jesus Christ. Christ. In In union, O Lord, with with your your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we pray that Christ may physically and spiritually enter our hearts, minds, and bodies. Cleanse us and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Christ, and let us never be separated from you. And now, Father, assured in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Remember who you are, remember what you love, remember what is sacred, remember what is true. Remember that you die and each day is a gift. Remember how you wish to live. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Hymn 371. Thanks be to God. Please join us downstairs for conversation, coffee stuff, baskets, and a sign-up sheet for next week.